Well, I wrote a book called Mythos, which tells the story uh, through the Greek myths, at least, of the creation of the universe and the first primordial deities, the beings of um, darkness and light and the sky and the earth and the sea, the most elemental gods who then bred and, and, and caused the birth of the Titans and then the Titans who gave birth to Zeus and his brothers and sisters who became the Olympian gods who then with Prometheus created us, mankind. And I told the story of Prometheus and the story of Pandora and, and, and some of the stories of humans being trans transformed by the gods as either a punishment or a reward into flowers and bugs and all kinds of other things. Uh, but this new book I've written is called Heroes and it's about those very particular Greek heroes, Theseus, Heracles, Perseus, Jason, with their quests and their defeating of monsters, Bellerophon on the winged horse Pegasus. And, um, and th there's something about Greek heroes. They're, 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 they're fabulously flawed. Uh, they're not heroes because they're perfect. They're heroes because they overcome their own imperfections. And I suppose that's what we mean by heroes. And that's why I've always been so fascinated by them, because, because we can see ourselves in, in all the Greek heroes. Atalanta, the only female hero, I'm sorry to say, um, who kind of qualifies as genuine hero, is complemented also by other females of extraordinary power and personality in these stories. So I've tried to, I've tried to be fair and honest as far as the original sources of Greek myths are concerned, but to retell them um, in a way that I hope shows why they're still so beguiling, so extraordinary, where the stories are somehow the strongest stories ever told, just in pure narrative terms, the what-nextness of them seems to me to be greater than any other stories I've ever since discovered.